Well, good morning, good morning. It's good to see everybody here. Everybody, give me a quick woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, don't you feel better? Some of you are like, I didn't know this is a Pentecostal church. Um, it's not. You're okay. Um, but, hey, uh, this morning, before we get going into the message, I need to do a little housekeeping um, and, and let you guys be aware of something that is happening and is going on within the church. It's nothing bad, so everybody be like, oh, what happened? Um, you're like, you're ready for me to drop this bomb, and it's no big bomb. Um, but it is something that we have kind of come up against a little roadblock and something that we are trying to do as a church. Um, many of you remember us getting ready to do a temporary building for the kids area out here on the north side of the building um, because we are cram-packed in our kids area in our space. And so um, we took pledges. There was uh, somebody in Texas that said, man, you guys raised 10000 I'll match it. Um, we matched it. It was awesome, F fantastic things going on. And in the process of us getting our permit and getting ready to do it, the city of Tulsa would only give us a permit for 13 months. Um, and that was a, a big setback to us. And we have tried to figure out some things uh, to do, and I'm just going to let you know um, right now as it sits, we are just trying to figure out a solution to this situation. Um, we're not going to force something to happen because um, we want to be really good stewards of your finances that you are trusting Foundation Church with. Um, and so we don't want to pay over $30,000 to bring in a building that we only get to use for a year and then have to shrink back. And so we are aggressively and we are currently figuring out a solution to this situation. Now, let me say this. This is it. This is, we keep praying, God, show us what you want us to do. And so that's exactly what we are doing as the leadership team, as the pastor, the staff, the board. We are desiring God, okay, this isn't going to be the past, so what is the past? Show us, um, give us direction, and that's what we are searching for. Now, let me say this. Some of you are like, so it, do we still have, you know, crowded rooms in the kids' area? Yes, we still do. And so here's what I would ask. For some of you that are in second service, that you would move to our first service. Let me tell you why I need you to move to first service. It's to make room for our second service. Um, but also, we have donuts in our first service for you and your kids. Um, all year long, there's free donuts for first service because I'm not past bribing you. Um, we will absolutely bribe you with food and try to blow your New Year's resolution in the process. Um, but also, we just need to keep making room in this service because most people are going to come to this service because, let's just face it, it's a weekend they want to sleep in. But this is a great problem. There are bad problems and there are good problems, right? There was a time where we didn't have any kids coming to children's ministry and Sammy and Alyssa were over in the high school being like, are you sure you need a children's pastor because we have no one to pastor right now, right? Um, now we have so many kids coming that we're having growth problems and growing pains and we're just experiencing a growing pain. So be patient with us because as your pastor, I want you to know we we are not going to compromise our excellence in our children's ministry. It is going to be excellent. Your kids are going to have a blast. They're going to have a great time. We're going to pack them in like sardines. We're going to keep growing. We ask you to be found people that are finding people and embrace the chaos. Can I tell you, anywhere Jesus was doing something, it was chaotic if you look in the Bible. It really was. And so I'm asking you, embrace the chaos because God is doing something really special here at Foundation Church. And we want to continue being good stewards of that. And so we are not going to compromise when it comes to the children's ministry. It is a priority as your pastor and as this church to always have an excellent children's ministry. And so we need some of you to serve in our first and second uh, services in the children's ministry specifically. Some of you have been on the fence. Some of you, this has not even been a consideration. You're like, nope, 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 nope. I'm asking you, stop saying no and ask the Lord, man, man, what do you want me to do? Is this an area where I can help and alleviate some pain, some growing pains? Because found it, really, this is a great problem to have, and we're trying to figure up a solution. So some of you are going, well, what about the money? What about the money that came in, right? And you're like, okay, you, you're going to get a new car, aren't you, Justin? Um, no, I'm not getting a new car. Um, all the finances that came in, we are keeping in a restricted fund 
for a building fund, um, whatever that looks like. However, if you would like your money back, if, as long as you gave by a check or by credit card, don't come up and say, yeah, I gave $20,000 because we know that's a lie. Um, but if you would like your finances, the money that you gave to that specific purpose back, please contact Greg Fisher, our business director. Um, we understand if you would like that back since it's not actually going to anything right now. But our plan is to keep it in a restricted fund where it is not spent, where it's not put in the general fund. Um, but it is there ready when we are able and we figure out, man, this is where God has given us a green light and we're going after that. So I wanted to give you guys that information because we believe in being transparent and not just trying to pull, pull one over on you. Um, that's where we are, Foundation Church. What a great thing God is doing in this place. I'm excited of what's ahead of us, Foundations, because we're going to keep growing. We're going to keep reaching. We're going to continue to have problems, but they're going to be good problems. So um, just wanted to give you guys that information. This week, we are in our second week of blind spots. Um, and if you missed last week, I would really, really encourage you to go back and listen to the message, not because it was me speaking, because it really helped set up this series. Parents of teenagers, I'm telling you, this is a series about wisdom, um, and as we get into the new year and we have resolutions and we have goals and we're wanting to be a better us, man, we've got to be able and be willing to check the blind spots of life. And so today I want to talk to you about wedding crashers, wedding crashers. And some of you are like, that is not appropriate in this church. I'm not talking about the movie, um, but I want to talk about wedding crashers. Now, our text for this series is found in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32 through 36. It says this, and so my children, listen to me, for all who follow my ways are joyful. Um, this is a promise of the Lord, and as we talked about in the beginning of this service, Luke 1, every word of God is true. It never fails. Um, so understand this promise is true. My dear children, listen to me for all who follow my ways, and this is wisdom, this is wisdom speaking like wisdom is a person right now through this proverb, who follow my ways are joyful. Listen to my instructions, and the result is, and be wise. Don't ignore it. Joyful are those who listen to me, watching for me daily at my gates, waiting for me outside my home. For whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But those who miss me injure themselves. Those who miss me injure themselves. Today I want to talk to you about the blind spot of emotions. The blind spot of emotions. I want to talk to you about all the feels, all the feelings, right? It's what we say now. I've got all the feels. Um, I want to talk to you about all the feels. I want to talk to you about the emotions because if there's one, probably the biggest blind spot that is going to be in your life is directly tied to your emotions. And we've all got them. You may say, well, I'm not an emotional person. You still have emotions. You still have to deal with emotions. You still have to process emotions, no matter your age, no matter your background, your upbringing. Man, we all have emotions. And if we're not careful, they can come crashing in around us. Um, this happened to me at my best friend's wedding. I was his best man, Corey. And um, he got married two years after me. I was about 24 at the time been married two years, and my buddy gets married um, in Oklahoma City at one of the churches that I grew up in. And I love my upbringing, man. I have a great mom and dad. Uh, my mom has passed away. She's been, uh, she, she gone for about five years now. Um, and so this is the reason I can actually tell this story now, because she can't come back and get me. Um, but uh, I grew up in a very traditional church, which I value my upbringing and, and the church that I was in was a great church. However, there was, they were wound pretty tight, right? Some of you grew up in churches that were wound pretty tight, and you were like, you can't do that? Where's that in the Bible? I don't know, but you can't do it, you know? And so that's the kind of church I kind of grew up in. And um, so going to prom like when I was in high school, it was a big deal. Like you didn't come to church the next day in your tuxedo. Like you erased all the evidence of it that you ever went to prom, right? Um, and so 
my best friend was getting married, and at the reception, they were going to have dancing. <laughs> right, I said the D word. And all the people, all the people, open up the church, open up the steeple, and there are the people, all the people were in, this was scandalous, okay, in the church. Some of you are like, are you for real right now? I'm for real, I am for real right now. Um, and, and once again, I'm not, I'm not 16, I'm not 18, I'm 24, I've been married two years, I'm paying my own bills. I'm not living at home playing Nintendo or Super Nintendo at that time. I am paying my own bills, making my own way. I'm a minister at the time. And my mom, here's what is the, the, the debauchery that is going to be happening at the, 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 the reception of my best friend. And she comes in while we're taking pictures down the center aisle of this church. People are still there. Justin, I've got to talk to you. And I'm like, oh, no, here it comes. And she's like, you, you can't dance. You cannot dance. I forbid it. <laughs> and she said a whole lot of words I can't say from this stage right now. And I'm like, are, are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding me right now? And um, she's just like, you're going to lose your minister's license. I'm like, I should have lost my minister's license a long time ago. <laughs> but... I don't know if she thought like we were going to get nasty and down and dirty or what we were going to do and bump and grind. You know, I, I don't know. I was like, you know, I ain't going to be doing the butt up there. You know, it's, I was the guy that I danced, you know, like this, just back and forth, back and forth, you know, keep room for the Holy Ghost, you know, um, <laughs> got to be some space in there. That, that's how I danced. And I, my, my mom is creating this huge scene. People from the church are looking. Corey's like, are you kidding me right now? This is my wedding. And I got down, I went down the stage and I grabbed her by her arms and I gave my mom the mom talk. I grabbed her and I talked with my teeth like this and I go, go to the car now. <laughs> you can't tell me to go to the car. Go to the car now. Well, your father's going to talk to you. Oh, you better come and talk to me. Go to the car now. And she walked out, storming out, and everybody's like, what was that all about? I'm like, huh. And here comes my dad like this. Literally walks in the church. <laughs> you know I'm here. I'm like, Dad, I know why you're here. I'm not going to, like, get down and dirty with it. I'm, I'm a man, you know, I'm 24, I'm a man, I know what I'm doing. He's like, I know, I know, I know, but your mom, I'm like, I know my mom, she's crazy right now. She's totally destroying this wedding and all of them are laughing and stuff. Here's the, here's the deal. My mom's emotions got out of control and made a scene like Beverly Goldberg, if you guys watch that, that TV show, that was my mom growing up, and, and totally created chaos because she was allowing her emotions to dictate her actions. And here's what I would tell you, is that you and I, while we may not crash a wedding and do that, we have allowed our emotions to dictate our actions. And it's become a blind spot for our life. And the first thing I would want you to know when it comes to emotions, when it comes to all the feels, is this. Make sure you are in charge of your emotions instead of your emotions being in charge of you. Make sure that you are in charge of your feelings, of your emotions, because one of two things has happened. Either you're in charge of your emotions or your emotions are in charge of you. Here's what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart above all else. What's, what's the, the, the writer of Proverbs saying to us right now? It's, it's not literally our physical heart. He's saying guard your soul, guard your feelings, guard your emotions, because it's going to determine the path of your life because most of us know emotions and feelings don't stay feelings, right? Emotions and feelings turn to thoughts. Thoughts turn into actions, and actions always turn into regrets and consequences or rewards. And Solomon's saying this. He didn't say guard your pocketbook. 
He didn't say, guard what you're watching on TV. No, no, no. He said, guard your heart. Guard your feelings. Guards watch, actively watch your emotions because it determines the course of your life. The quality of your life will be determined by the condition of your heart. And the reality is this. Most of us and most of the time, we just watch our emotions instead of dictate our emotions. We just watch our emotions come and go and go wherever they want to go and we follow our feelings because we're in a society right now that is if it feels good and if, it's, if I feel this way, then it must be this way. And, and hear me, just because you feel a certain way doesn't make that certain way true. Let me, let me repeat that. Just because you feel a certain way doesn't make that certain way true true. It, it, it's just the reality. That's called feelings and emotions. And if you and I aren't careful and we don't check the blind spots of emotions, it's going to wreak havoc in our life because we start making emotional choices that affect the rest of our life. And, and when we make an emotional choice, rarely is it a wise choice. When you make an emotional choice, when you make an emotional decision, mo not all the time, but most of the time, it isn't a wise choice because emotions lead us where they want us to go instead of where we need to go. So what are the four emotions that you and I deal with? What are the emotions that most of us probably struggle with and wreak havoc in our life? I, I came up with a little, uh, I don't know what you call it, angiogram. It's not an angiogram. That's something medical. But <laughs> you better pray to God I don't show up at the hospital as a doctor and just be like, I'm going to get him out of here, angiogram. Um, <laughs> The four emotions, <laughs> you're an idiot. The four emotions that have a tendency um, to, to make us struggle is something I call flap, flap. Um, and, and the definition of flap is simply this, to swing or sway back and forth loosely. And if you allow these emotions to control you, listen to me, your life is going to swing back and forth loosely. And there will not be any consistency to it if you don't get the emotions of flap under control. First emotion we deal with is fear. Fear. There's so many of us that we make decisions based off of fear that it's, you go back and you're like, that wasn't a wise choice. No, it was a fearful choice. And you know the scripture, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Many of the reasons we're not choosing soundly and we're not making sound and right decisions is because we're making choices and decisions out of fear rather than out of a sound mind. Many of you, it's not what you're choosing to do, it's what you're choosing not to do. You aren't engaging because you are afraid of, well, what if, what if this happens? Happens. What if that happens? And you aren't living this full life that God has called you to because you have let fear run your life. Fear is in control instead of you being in control of fear. It's the first part of flap. The second one is lust. Some of you are like, man, I was hoping for love. Um, but the reality is most of us in this place, at some point in time, you are going to struggle with lust. And it's crazy to me because the church doesn't talk a lot about lust, and yet it is a click away from your phone. It is right there when you're leaving this place. There's going to be things that you, you watch football today, and there's going to be commercials. There's going to be situations that you walk into that create and want to create havoc in your life. Can I tell you, lust is like the tsunami of emotions. And if you don't get a hand on it, if you don't learn to run from it, if you don't learn to dictate that emotion and learn what to do with it, it's going to destroy so much in your life. And so many times we just want to be like, well, Justin, I'm sitting by my teenager and you saying the word lust makes it uncomfortable. Lust, 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 lust. <laughs> Mom and dad, it's part of life. 
And whether you want to address it doesn't mean that they're not going to deal with it. But I will tell you this about lust. For every person in here, don't take what is available instead of what you committed to. Lust wants you to take what's available, what's convenient. And what is available may be convenient for a season, but that's not what you committed to and it won't reward you in the long run. Man, you've got to be in control of your emotions or your emotions are going to be in control of you. Guard your heart. Above all else, guard your feelings. In this area, guard your feelings for it dictates the path of your life. Third one is anger. Third emotion that we deal with is, well, this is just the person I am. No, 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 this is an emotion you feel. And the Bible doesn't say you're not going to be angry. It says in your anger, don't sin. Right? You're going to get angry. I got a puppy right now. I got to tell you, there are moments when that dog does not come to me. I'm like, you come here right now, you stupid thing. There's anger. I want to pick it up and be like, not me, you know, but I don't. I'm like, good boy, good boy, calm down, count to three, he came back. Um, in, your ang- in your anger, don't sin. In other words, don't let it get out of control. And some of us, we have done damage that we're still trying to recover from in our relationships. Situations, opportunities have shut down because we got angry. And so the situation shut down because we didn't learn to control that emotion. It very much controlled us. And as a result, our life is swaying back and forth. And people don't know if we're going to be angry If we're going to be pleasant, there's no consistency in our relationships, in our life, in our situations, because there's no consistency in your emotion. You're flapping around. Anger. The the last one is this, is pride. Pride. Are are you so prideful you can't be told anything? Are you a know-it-all, right? That's what we're talking about. Are you you a know-it-all? I got to tell you, if you are a prideful Know it all, man, you are miserable to listen to. I mean, to live with, <laughs> to listen to, and to listen to. Does anybody know? Oh, I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. Yeah, I totally know that. Like, if somebody tries to bring correction, like, hey, Justin, you have food in your teeth. Oh, I know I had that food right here. It's right in this spot right here where it always gets. I was saving it. I wanted to see if you would tell me about it. What? Shut up. If you were a teenager in this place and you still live with your parents, and your parents can't tell you anything. You're like, I know, Mom and Dad. Uh. Can I tell you? You're annoying right now. <laughs> You're welcome, parents. I said it. <laughs> if you are a spouse here and you can't be told anything, you're just being selfish. And you're being stubborn. And your relationship's going to keep flapping back and forth and swaying and there's no consistency because you're not guarding your heart. You're not guarding, what, well Justin, where'd you come up with all these emotions? Easy, the book of Proverbs. If you read through the book of Proverbs, these are really the four main emotions it starts talking about all throughout the scripture. And we talked about reading the book of Proverbs this past month. You know, that in January, I really want everybody to read the book of Proverbs. Man, the wisest man to ever live, Solomon, keeps talking about pride. He keeps talking about lust. He keeps talking about anger. He keeps talking about fear. And our ability to control our emotions, our ability to guard our hearts going to dictate the path of our life. So how do we do that? What what do we do? Because we understand our tendency in this. So what do we do? The other day I was in Target. And um, you're like, you still shop at Target? Judgment on you. Um, But we were in Target. And... um, (laughs) We were, me and Casey were there on a Friday, it's my day off, we're walking around, and I see this mom pushing this little girl around, and the little girl's starting to like have a mental, not, not mental, an emotional breakdown. And she's like, no, mom, I don't want that. And the mom's like, well, 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 just tell mommy what you want, just tell mommy what you want, and mommy will give it to you. Just please, and she starts hitting her mom, and like, I don't want it, I don't want it. She's like, please just tell me what you want, and I will get it for you. And I was like, I know what she needs, I don't know what she wants, but I know that she needs to go to a bathroom with you and her and have a little powwow. Powwow. 
bring the pow and you'll see the wow. There's something biblical in there. Powwow. And what, not in my notes. You're welcome. Um, that was not in first service. Um, and here's the deal. It's one thing for a kid to have an emotional breakdown, right? Emotional meltdown. But we see adults do it all the time. Right? We don't vocalize it like a kid. We don't, we don't, oh, I don't want that, blah, blah, blah. But we see people whose life are totally controlled and totally dictated by how they feel. And the Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, right? We're, we're in the love chapter. It says this right in the middle of talking about love, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. It says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. And one other translation says, I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. This is how you deal with emotions. You, in essence, learn when you grow up and become a man and a woman of God, you are now no longer controlled by the emotions of the moment, by the lust that you are feeling in the moment, by the fear that is kind of trying to enter in, by the, by the, by the pride that's trying to creep into your life slowly and slowly and slowly. No, 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 no. You become a man. And you put away childish things. You put away following your feelings because that's not what true men and women of God do. You have to put away your feelings before your feelings put you away. And that's our role. It's that we grow up and we don't, we don't think like a child. We don't speak like a child. We don't understand and reason like a child. But I become a man. And part of that, when I become that man and that woman of God, is that I take those childish things, the way I feel, the way I think, the way that I process things, and I understand that I've got to guard my heart because it determines the course of my life. And I put it away so that it doesn't put me away. So what's that look like? As somebody that's putting things away, it's our second point, is that we understand obedience, not feelings, will lead you to success. Obedience, not feelings, will lead you to success. Well, Justin, why did you pick success for that? Well, let me tell you why. Because everybody I know wants a successful marriage. Everybody I know wants successful finances. Everybody I know wants to be successful in their health. Everybody I know wants to raise successful kids. We are all about, you know, seven, seven tips to a more successful you, how to be successful in your next venture. All the books, self-help books, all the, and, and hear me, as a follower of Christ, you're not going to feel your way to success. You're going to obey your way there. And here's, I, I love this quote. It's by Matthew Henry. He said, love is the root Obedience is the fruit. Man, love is the root of why you serve, but obedience is the fruit of serving, the fruit of following. When you have obedience, it starts yielding fruit in your life. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25 through 27, out of the same chapter, says this, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet and stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked, but keep your feet from following evil. Can I tell you, I think that last verse right here is key for most of us. It's not, it's not that we wake up in the morning and be like, I'm going to follow the path of evil this morning. <laughs> You know, you don't wake up and become Gru off Despicable Me anymore. You know, you're not like, what horrible thing can I do today that's going to cause pain and suffering to those around me and connected to my life? We, we, that's, that's not most of us. That's probably 99.9% .9 of us don't think that way. But you know where we get caught up? We get sidetracked. We get distracted, and as you know, just like I do, a distracted driver is a dangerous driver. We, we get distracted so easily, and before we know it, we venture off. We're not going straight. We're not, our eyes aren't fixed 
any longer. We're just, we're just following, and I truly think most of the reason we get sidetracked is we're just chasing after more. Man, more, more feelings, more, I want to feel more better. You know, I want to feel, I want to make more money. And it may be a little shady here or there, but man, man, I just, there could be more, there could be more. And you're missing the significance of your life because you're getting sidetracked instead of staying obedient. Mark out your path and don't get sidetracked from it. Whenever I go to Destin, Florida, if you've been there, you know it's kind of a twist and turn drive there, and you've got to go through several states. And back in the day, I'm going to age myself here a little bit. How many of you remember Rand McNally atlases? Come on, somebody. Like this was when going on a road trip was a lot more fun because you didn't have to listen to Siri or whoever it was. Your Tom Tom tell you how to get there. You would like get your atlases out and you would find, okay, I'm in Tulsa. I need to get to Destin. And you would take your highlighter, right? And you'd go through Oklahoma and then you'd turn it to Arkansas. Okay, here's Arkansas. And then and you're like, you really? used to do that we really used to do it and some people in this place still do <laughs> scary but why but why because it's fun okay because it's fun um but here's the deal when you mark you had to mark out your path because you're looking okay can i can i take a loop to miss the traffic here and, and what's the quickest, straightest, safest, most best way to get there that's what we did and, and that's what this is talking about Man, mark out your path, stay, stay consistent and faithful to it, and don't get sidetracked from it. Don't, don't let something sidetrack. And here's the deal. When you would do this and you would say, okay, I've got to take this turn here in Mississippi, and, and you would get on this road, and, and you kind of are like, am, am I going the right way? You know, you would hit this place. You didn't see any markers. You're like, I, I turned there, but was that where I was supposed to turn? And you're just like, oh, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. But I know this is right. I know this is right. I know this is right. And you'd stay going and stay going. And then you'd see the marker and be like, I'm right. Yes. This is the path I was supposed to be on. Some of you know that feeling. There was no voice like, continue 500 more feet. No, no, no. There was no, there was no assurance. You were just going because you knew that was the way to go. Can I tell you that's life? That's life. And you have marked out a straight path for life. And there's going to be moments where it doesn't feel good. There's going to be moments where your obedience doesn't feel like it's yielding any fruit. You, you just want to feel your way and switch directions to what you committed to, to what you mapped out. And, and the Proverbs would say, don't, don't get sidetracked by your emotions. Don't, don't go a way that you were never meant to go, but stay focused on what's straight ahead of you. It may not feel right. You may feel like you've lost yourself. But man, stay committed to what your path is, to what you committed to. Can I tell you, there's so many people, there's so many couples right now that one of the spouses is saying, well, I just don't feel love for them anymore. Well, that's all right. Hear me. That's all right. If you go back and read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love, when it really matures, doesn't just stay an ooey-gooey feeling like, ooh, I feel so good right now. It matures into a choice of choosing to love. Remember it says love is patient. Love is kind. Nobody feels patient in this place. Come on. Be honest. If you're going to have a successful marriage and successful relationships. Hey, I see this all the time on Facebook. I don't feel like adulting today, right? I don't feel like parenting today. I want a day off. There's no day off. You know it. I know it. I know you don't feel like adulting. I know you don't feel like parenting. I know you don't want, you don't feel all the things and all the feels aren't there in your marriage. But if you're going to have the success that you committed to, you obey your way there. You don't feel it. Man, it is huge. And some of you, the tendency is right now, you want to feel your way to success, but it will never lead you there. It will sidetrack you into chasing what feels good in the moment instead of what is successful for the long term. And God has better for you. Guard your heart because it determines 
your path. 1 John 5, 3 says, loving God means doing what he tells us to do. And really, that isn't hard at all. Some of you, you know what God's telling you to do. You're just not doing it. And John says this, if you really love him, you'll do what he asks. Obedient is a part, obedience is a part of your life. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. If you can leave this up here for just a little bit. This is how you stay obedient. Man, this is how you stay on the straight path, is that you take captive every thought. There's going to be thoughts that come in, and you take what you feel, and you put it up against the truth. And Jesus said this. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When you don't know what is true, when you don't know if those feelings are true, you don't just watch your heart, you guard your heart, and you take captive those thoughts because those thoughts came from feelings because feelings turn into thoughts that turn into actions that lead to regret or rewards. You take captive, you take grab hold of that thought that is entering your mind that makes you want to go sideways, and you take it captive and you make your thought obedient. You obey your way to success. You make it obedient to the authority and the truth of Jesus Christ. Because he is the truth. And he said this as well. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. See, there's freedom in obedience. So many times we feel like we're this, but it's actually the exact opposite. It sets you free to live the life that you want to live, to live that successful life out day in and day out. So when... The emotions of flap want to come up. You got to take captive of those thoughts, those feelings, so you're not swaying back and forth, but that you're guarding your heart because it, not what your intentions are, not what your desires are, men, keep guard over your heart because it determines path of your life. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for today. And God, this morning, I, I, I pray that you would help us. Help us in this. God, help us to not be led by a life of feeling, but to be led by a life of wisdom. That, Lord, we would not allow the emotions to become our blind spot and wreak havoc, but Lord, we would invade emotions with truth. God, I pray that you would move and you would work in this area in our life, and that Lord, man, we would keep watch, we would keep guard over our heart, that we wouldn't get sidetracked, but man, we would not follow the feelings, but we would just be obedient to what your word says, because you are the truth. You are the light. You are the way. God, there's freedom in truth. And so, Lord, I pray right now that we would choose to obey your ways instead of feel our way through life so that there may be fulfillment, so that that verse in John 6, 6, that you came that we may have life and have it to the full could become a reality in every aspect of our life. I pray moving us. In Jesus' name, I pray. With heads bowed, eyes closed, if you're here today and you say, Justin, you know what? I'm here. And somewhere along the lines, I got sidetracked. Man, I'm just not where I should be in my relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to give you a chance to change that. So today, if you're here and you say, I've never asked Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of my life. We want to give you that chance. But maybe you're here and you say, Justin, really, I just got sidetracked and I'm not where I should be and I need to get recentered this morning. That's you. When I count to three, would you just raise your hand and we're going to lead you in a prayer that will change your life and the direction that life is going. One, two, three. Is there anyone here? You say, Justin, that's me. There's one. There's one. Is there? Yeah, there's two. Is there anyone else? You say, Justin, that's me today. 
There's three. Is there anyone else? You say, Justin, that's me today. Man, I, I've just gotten sidetracked. And I, see, I see you over here. There's four. Is there anyone else? You say, Justin, that's me. I want to join these four individuals that have raised their hand. Because, man, I want to be on the straight and narrow. If you raise your hand, if you please repeat this prayer after me. I mean it from your heart. Jesus, I come before you today. And I confess that I have sinned. That I've messed up. But I ask for your forgiveness. God, I ask that your grace and love would enter my life. I turn away from the life that I was living to grab hold of the life you have for me. I'm going to live for you the rest of my days. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Can we give these four individuals that raise their hand a huge round of applause? Yeah. Hey, please don't leave just yet. Hold on. If you raise your hand, please do this. Your next step is getting baptized in water. Um, it's going public with a decision that you just made. I've got something for everybody here, so stick with me just for a second. Um, and, and so if, if you want to know what your next step is, we believe growing equals changing. It's getting baptized. It's growing in your relationship with the Lord. We've got an Alpha Connect group that's all about what, what I do now that I've made this life-changing decision. We would love to get you plugged in that's getting ready to start in a few weeks. You can get all that information in our Connect Center. It's a bright green room in the lobby, and we've got some awesome people and some information. We would love to meet you and get you information that you need to know. Now, the last thing is this. I'm going to ask everybody to stand across this building. I gave you homework last week. Here's your homework this week. Every beginning of the year, people like want to get a phrase or a word for each, each year, right? Like, what's my word going to be? And I, I want you to get a word because here's what happens. When we go to check our blind spots and we allow emotions to get in our blind spot, it distorts reality. You can't see what happens. It, it, Objects in the, in the mirror may be closer than they appear, but it cracks the mirror of life and you can't check your blind spot. So we need to do have something that, man, takes those thoughts captive. And I want you to get a word. I want you to get a phrase that when you're feeling emotions and you're feeling all the feels, that, man, it takes captive those thoughts and makes it submissive and obedient to the rule and the will of Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And you can steal my word if you want to, but my word for this year is overwhelm. God, overwhelm my feelings with your truth. God, overwhelm my life with your anointing. God, overwhelm this place to where we can't hardly have church because there's such a presence of God. Overwhelm this building with growth that we don't have room, but that's not going to stop us. It's not going to be able to contain what you want to do. Overwhelm me with your goodness because God, I want to guard my heart. I want to guard my feelings, my thoughts, because it it determines the course of my life. Get your word. You may think, oh, that's just dumb. No, no, get your word. Because the reason our feelings are dictating our lives is because we're not dictating our feelings. Get a word that takes captive those thoughts and those feelings. And it brings it into the reality of the truth that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. If our prayer team would come down here to the front real quick. This morning, if you're here. And you need, you need prayer. Man, you just say, Justin, I'm here, and I just don't know what to do. Can I, can I just say, the Bible says, if any of us lacks, lacks wisdom, ask for it, and he'll give it. And so this morning, if you need prayer in this place before you leave, man, we would love the opportunity to pray with you, to agree with you. Maybe you're going through a hard time. You just, man, I just don't feel God. I just don't know if he really is good. Come and let us agree and pray with you in this place before you leave. Foundation Church, I love you. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your weekend. Some of you need to make the switch to first service for us next week. Let's go out. Let's be found people that find people and make a difference in this world. I love you. Have a great week. If you need prayer, come down at this time. All the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me. Down fights till I'm found, please a 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless 
love of God. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie won't tear down, coming after me. I don't deserve it. Still, you carry yourself away. 